In this video, we're gonna take a look at a green ink by KWZ, their green gold number two. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the green ink playlist, so if you'd like to see more, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. We get no feather, spread, halo sheen. We do get some shading that's going on, and it's funny because I didn't mark it as the green gold too, but this definitely is in that I have it marked with the chromatography, it's weird. We do get some shading in the extra fine. We get little bits of shading going on in the medium, not so much with the stub. The extra fine's quite a bit lighter than the stub. The medium's just a little bit lighter than the stub. Extra fine took 14 seconds to dry while the medium took 21. Scrubby for both, don't show much for color variation, but it does show itself a little bit in the medium and quite a bit in the extra fine. Smear test says you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Jinhao 51A with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, minor ghosting, we have no feather, spread, halo sheen. There's no shading going on here. The extra fine's quite a bit lighter than the stub. The medium's darker than the extra fine, still lighter than the stub. Extra fine took 21 seconds to dry. The medium took 30. Scrubby for both show no color variation. We're really not getting it in the writing. And the smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see here is this kind of golden yellow at the bottom that's pushing its way up to a darker green at the top. Now when they cross, we get an interesting brown tone that's occurring. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water and it looks exactly the same, meaning I don't expect any kind of resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shading for the stub, little bits of shading, little bits of lighter areas like in the middle of Fox, like the beginning of Over in the medium. Now the extra fine shows the best shading throughout it. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub while the medium is only a little bit lighter than the stub. Extra fine took 16 seconds to dry and the medium took 23. Scrubby for both show no color variation, although the extra fine does show it kind of nice. The smear test says you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink could be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it handles itself fairly well. It does thicken up a little bit, but it's fully readable, so you could use it in a note-taking situation if you needed to go back and highlight. Now, water is reactivating, and you start to see some of the white of the paper coming through. It did only take water to get it out of my pen. Pen flush does everything that water does and it acts a little bit faster. You can see how aggressively it's really pulling it off the paper. The one third bleach solution that you're not gonna need completely destroys it. The next writing sample is done on yellow rhodia paper. Not that I expected somebody would be using green ink in a professional environment on yellow paper, but I do like to see what would happen for its tone change. Now, we do see looking at the scrubby, it lightens up a little bit. It lightens up the medium just a little bit. The extra fine, just a hair lighter, but the stub looks exactly the same. So it's for the most part, a pretty opaque ink. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. KWZ's green gold number two has a viscosity of 2.21, making it normal. 
If you're interested in how the viscosity is tested and the bell curve's made, there's a link to that video down in the description. Now, let's take a look at Apica CD paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, light bits of shading occur in the stub. Much better shading is going on in the extra fine and even the mediums getting involved with some very nice shading here. Now the medium's just a little bit lighter than the stub and the extra fine's a lot lighter than the stub. Extra fine took nine seconds to dry while the medium took 16. Scrubby for both, far left to far right do show a tiny bit of color variation but it shows better in the writing. Smear test says you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. KWZ's green gold number two has an average dry time of 21 seconds. So it's right on the very edge, but it's still normal. The last writing sample is done on Apica CD paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen. We do see some shading in the stub. We see better shading in the extra fine that's quite a bit lighter than the stub. We see pretty decent shading in the medium, which is lighter than the stub, but darker than the extra fine. Extra fine took 13 seconds to dry and a medium took 15. Scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation. A medium shows none, but it's not too bad in the writing. And the smear test you could likely recover if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like KWZ's Green Gold 2, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with an orange ink by Noodler's, their Apache Sunset. If you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of KWZ's Green Gold number two? I see a lot, tons of tone variation by pen. Specifically, how much lighter this is from this very dry fine. In general, I like the shading and the look in the writing samples. I'm just not sure about a bottle of this, seeing what's happening here. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? I really didn't care for that very light tone that I was getting from a dry fine. I like it from a medium or a wet, fine, or medium pen. I think it puts down a nicer, darker color that really brings out a lot of its shading. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Ackerman's number 18.